Hello. La 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 live. We're hey. live. What? We're live. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, we have a special, special evening planned. It's Tuesday. So we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> Chef is, is, uh, is the host. Hold on, hold on. When you say Tuesday, do it like you're wrapping your lips around something voluptuous. Tuesday. Oh, God, that looked awful. <laughs> I am so. Oh, my God. I was going to say, oh, what is man. it? We starting an easy, easy listening radio station. I mean. Yeah. It's the perfect Damn. voice for it's like... It's 8 o'clock Eastern time, and you're listening to Between the Rolls. The Rolls. I also thought we could kick off something like maybe like a leisure suit piano singer. Dun, mm-hmm. dun, 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 dun. Hey, you look great. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's Between the Rolls. Dun, 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 dun. We got the Shiners in tonight. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, on and on and on. Yeah, um, well, welcome, everyone. This is Tuesday with um, our weekly podcast slash talk show slash uh, investigation uh, slash discussion. Um, I could just keep saying slash and then trying to come up with other pithy words, but I won't. Can you do that for an hour? Yeah, I could actually do that for an hour. (laughs) Um, (laughs) From Murder Hobo Inc., um, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Um, Jump on into our uh, Discord um, chat thing that we have. Uh, We have swag. We have stuff you can buy that has our things on it. And Thanks. Um, we have a YouTube archive, uh, okay, and YouTube it's archive. not accurate to size. And what's amazing <laughs> is that we actually have sponsors. We have we we have we we have people that we're supposed to plug, and in return they give us things like samples that almost broke Kyle the other day. That was one of the. We almost things. did it again. <laughs> and that, that was, was amazing. The, that, no, was, that was, was <coughs> city streets. Uh-huh. I don't pick up the plunger anymore. You don't Hopefully, it's not the city anymore. streets after Mardi Gras. So. And those oh. were adventure oh. sense, right? Adventure sense is uh, adventure is sense things. by That's Oddfish right. Games. Oddfish Games. That's right. And um, we there's a dice company like Dickety Dog Dice or um, no. What's... Dirty Dog Dice. D- Dirty no, Dog Dice. Oh, you dog. guys suck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, um, I, I have a hard time remembering since there's it's lots of these in it. Pirate Dog. Dog Dice. I don't know why I want to say like Dirty, Dirty. Dog. Dirty Dog, dog Dice pirate. rolls off the tongue. Dirty Dog. I mean, oh, for when you roll like you to remember. Shit. Well, Get you, dirty yeah. dog dice. Pirate dog dice. Pirate those, dog are, dice. those are our sponsors. Yeah, where you don't roll yeah. like shit. When you don't want to, that's right. Mm-hmm. So um, this is Don't our, forget about the uh, uh, Shine Project that Oddfish <laughs> Game also <laughs> has. Project, that's right. Oddfish mm-hmm. Games also has the Shine Project. Thank you for reminding me, Kyle. You're I had welcome. completely forgotten about that. And I've forgotten about that because I just forgot. He does have any notes. He doesn't have any notes whatsoever. I'm I'm just winging it. I'm just kind of going on based upon what, you know, I'm thinking. And uh, but we do have a good show for you tonight. At least I think it's a good show. The first half, we're going to be talking about what we did over the past week in gaming here at Murder Hobo Inc. We had three different gaming sessions. We will talk about that. We will talk in depth about that. We will talk at least for (laughs) 30 some odd minutes. Oh, that <laughs> no, we'll be lucky if we can wrap if that takes 10 15 minutes because what we really want to talk about, other than uh, that, is um, we're starting off some new campaigns here at, uh, at Murder Hobo Inc., and we're all very excited about it. And so, we're going to have a discussion about, about how you kick off campaigns, how do you, how do you formulate uh, ideas, how do you set boundaries, how do you set rules, how do you not do it? Are you that's actually talking, Kyle? Negative. or... See, but that's, that's gonna be that, that's gonna be Kyle will take will uh will 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 take the lead on that. Uh so uh that'll be transitioning uh into him. It'll be a seamless transition. It'll just like I'll fade away and Kyle will just start talking and explain a whole bunch of stuff about starting a new campaign. Which speaking of which, if you're not watching this visual gag that I'm doing over here. You're probably listening to the podcast audio version, which you can... Uh, Murder, a tiny URL. 
when it's it, it is tinyurl.com front slash murder herbo inc audio because we have faces made for radio we do, do have faces made for except radio. for this one this one's good for video that one's for telegram <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have a, i have a i have a face made for 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 smoke signals and uh but i do have <laughs> i, I, I <laughs> It, nice. it, I it, almost it, snarfed it, that, you know. Yeah, I know. I was that would have been. So you, I didn't. I didn't. I did not get a. I didn't get a string. So, oh my god, snarf. <laughs> <laughs> I love great letter words. Kids. Okay, <laughs> That's a great word. Snarf. So, <laughs> snarf. We're not going to get anything done tonight. We're just going to sit here and laugh like a bunch of idiots. Gonna make, we're just gonna make make words and and make words. Narf is a good one though. I like that one. Hey, it's, have wow. you been drinking, Scott? I mean, no, I can't honestly, figure, I haven't. Really? This is this is this is like my first look. That like that's two swigs of shiner right there. That's that's, there that's, that's hardly anything. Wow! Yeah, oh my God, he's we're anything. sillier when we're sober. I mean, my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 silliness does eventually come out. But I do want to um, have a chance to introduce ourselves. I'm going to start here with David. David, tell us about who you are, what you do, and uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, please allow me to introduce myself. I am a man of wealth and taste. Um, yes. We been around that. for a long, long years. Um, no, actually, <laughs> I'm going on my years? second year. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm David. I uh, play in our Thursday night show, Cacophony, which is an ongoing soap opera, as Frank likes to call it, not a campaign. Uh, I play Bullshit. Zadar, the arcane trickster. Um, every once in a while, I'll get a one shot on a Saturday. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be in our up and coming campaign, our, one of our two <laughs> campaigns that we'll have ongoing. Yes. That'll be great. We got to figure out names to call long. those. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I still do. like Giraffe Kicked for your guys' campaign. <laughs> there we go. Giraffe Kicked. That Giraffe is great. Kicked campaign. I like that. Yeah. We'll have yeah, to like think that. of that. Yeah. Carol, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are. Tell us what you do and uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I am a longtime gamer. I've been gaming since the world's flat. Maybe only slightly shorter than Scott. Yes. Uh, continuously. Uh, I'm also an occasional GM. I'll GM on here once in a while, and I'll do, I've done conventions and occasionally a few things at home. And of course, I also am a commission mini painter, which I guess is sort of my claim to fame before this. Mm. Uh, and a very good, a very good mini painter. Thank you. I know. I have, and I said, I can't wait till, I can't wait till my latest comes out because. I can I can say what it is. It's, it's not a picture, but uh, it said I I the late my latest convention was for a convention. It's when mm -hmm. I staff at. I usually normally do the mini painting table there where people can pick mini minis and I bring all the rest of supplies and uh, people can paint them for free, uh, just to get people you know into the hobby without having them having to spend a fortune to see if they like it or not. And this That's convention, which also Murder Hobo Week will be running a scenario at, uh, is called Total Confusion or Total Con. And the mini, which is so exciting, is of Austin Powers because it's all <laughs> spies this year. They commission a mini and then they, they get me to paint it. So that's cool. That's it's super, really super, super, super freaking cool. I can't wait till the pictures come out. So, um, and then I'll be able to post it on my own feed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, Kyle. My <laughs> muse, my mentor, my oh, Lord. Uh, I wouldn't say Lieben. mentor. That's a little much. Lieben. Muse. What's, what's, what's that? What, muse. There you go. Muse is that's good. That's me. Muse. I'm the muse man because my painting painting company is Muses Touch Miniature Painting. I'm that's the muse. True. That is. That is. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to go back to shame. Shameful plug right here. Damn right. <laughs> Fjord, I'll right go here. with Fjord. Everyone it's knows fine. me as me, anyways. Shameless. Plug. Bearded Carol. <laughs> Bearded Carol. That's... Bearded Carol. Well, we decide yeah, that I have enough good. here to actually be Bearded Carol. Yeah, I know. 
What's wrong? Uh, I almost have enough hair to be Santa Claus, but I'm you still, do just at Kenny Rogers, right? We're just now. we're just keeping yeah, it at Kenny, Kenny Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> we're just keeping it at Kenny Rogers. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. No one in between. How can we be wrong? Stay away with me. Sail away. Sail away. I thought it was sail, sail away. away. Yeah, oh, sail away. Oh, <laughs> sail away. That's right. It's not stay awake with me. It's sail away with me. Thank sail you. Away. Stay awake with me, or I'll put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's that was terrible. Um, Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself. What you do. Right now, I'm just imagining an old Dolly Parton. Happy birthday, Dolly! And Happy Kenny birthday, Rogers, Dolly. and they're driving down the road, and one of them is falling asleep. Stay awake with me. <laughs> Nice, nice. That's right. Uh, that's right. Hi, everybody. I'm Kyle. I am uh, uh, the DM for the uh, second. Um, uh, what did I call it? What's that reward that the kids get despite the fact that they lost? Oh, participation um, award. I am the participation award. DM for. Uh, I was gonna second. say Miss Congeniality. No, not congeniality. No, that's, that's beauty. Loser. Huh? That's yeah, beauty. No things i'm the consolation dm for the consolation mm. campaign on thursdays uh, uh and as well as showing up to between the roles on just <coughs> every single between the roles we've ever had except for the ones where they kick me off for a guy with better hair which is <laughs> more often than i care to admit <sighs> or nice. more hair it's usually just more, more hair more hair more hair, more hair. More, more hair insane. that you people see. To be fair, it's a shag carpet down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's more cushion for the pushing, I'm told. Oh my freaking God. Wow. Imagine the comfiest chair you've ever sat in and then sink down like okay. seven or eight inches further than that. I just, have... I just got the image of get them to the Greek with the fuzzy walls. You know, they're just oh the fuzzy walls. <laughs> rub Please. the Jeffries. Rub the Jeffries, right. Please, can we actually get to like the topics? Get get away from oh, this, this topic. Oh, this is much, much more. No, fun. this is no. much more <laughs> interesting. Yeah. No, no. It's why no. the drunk people really love me. They just come up and start rubbing, <laughs> rubbing the Jeffries. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, Frank is cursing on Have you, you know, Twitch chat. Absent. So. My favorite line. I would love to. Absinthe is good. Mm -hmm. Absinthe is good. Yep. He I'm said, sorry. So yeah, um, <laughs> now that we've all been, it, yeah, he said me. this show was going to be good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Good. That's a lie. Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we, I, I have digressed into talking about Jeffrey's <laughs> shag carpets and 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 absinthe, and that's never a good start for an evening. Everyone there we go. <laughs> so let's do talk about what uh, what we're going to talk about today, and that is uh, the first part. We're going to discuss. The activities of the Murder Hobo cast. Um, first, first one off yet yeah, tonight was uh, a uh, an adventure we called uh, Frontier Fighting. David, why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh, that? Was our that was our cacophony um, um, soap opera, not not campaign. Um, what happened in uh, oh. Frontier Fighting? Everybody was Frontier Fighting. <laughs> Yeah. Those cats were fast as lightning. Yes. <laughs> uh, it is uh, the continuation of our ongoing saga. The heroes of Cacophony have uh, ventured out. We uh, have been, we had a number of different countries or uh, fight them and things like that vying for, for our assistance. And we chose one and Right now, we're helping the Telosians, and we are crossing the plains, the grassy plains of Telosia. And this was our second stop on our journey. Uh, we stopped at an outpost, um, settled in for the evening, started off as a really uneventful night, and then, yeah, all hell started break loose. First of all, there was a fight with, uh, with uh, Daphne, with a little... Uh, uh, somebody trying to infiltrate the camp uh, that didn't end too well. Uh, then, uh, yeah, later on that night, the big battle started. We had a fight with uh, something that can burrow 
into a fort. <laughs> so we ended up fighting. Uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly or incorrectly, just let me know. A boulette? Um, we have a joke about it. We call it a boulet, like the French version. Uh, French. A French, French. Michael Boulet. But no, no, no. We, we There's a joke in our group that, you know, that, um, you know, you can harvest from those things, you know, this, this oil that you put in a potions and it, it it's like a potion of youth because, you know, it's the oil of boulet. Ah, uh, okay. You're a shitty. And continuing. You, everybody here should be old enough on the on the group except for Kyle. I don't know oh, if Kyle's oh, ever oh, heard no, of the no, oil no. Oh, jeez. My I grandmother used to use that stuff. Honestly, anyway. Uh, I remember <laughs> I... my character invented that uh, bullets have a rampaging sexual life. And so oh, no. mating season, things get really that might really have been what, that might have been what set it off anyway yeah. <laughs> that should be what set it, it off. it ended up uh going on a rampage within our camp i mean you know just burrowing <laughs> into one of the the tents uh yeah it was awful uh think of tremors folks you know right. pretty much um tremors yeah yeah so <laughs> Unfortunately, one of our Telosians ended up falling in battle. Um, we did, mm. uh, we did manage to slay the beast. Uh, Zadar harvested uh, uh, a good piece of it. Took him most of the night, and he earned uh, he earned a point of exhaustion of uh, taking a bit of the armor off of the bullet uh, for Daphne to have it fashioned into a shield whenever we get to. An artisan that can do that. So uh, anyway, we continued on across the plains. We uh, approached the, the Wolf Lake outpost. We settled in there and uh, we uh, consulted one of the sages uh, about more information on the Temple of the Kurd. Uh, this, this, this older sage, um, before they were moving on, out of the, the, the checkpoint that we are, because they're, they're, you know, uh, nomadic people, uh, gave us some insight into what happened around the Kurdish Tower and uh, the calamity that befell and uh, an explosion of magic uh, mm -hmm. that emanated from the tower. And that's why in Telosia, magic is, is people are really wary of it. So, mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, after consulting with her, we also did an inquiry into our patron, Hepta, uh, trying to determine whether or not with this new power, if we're able to successfully uh, take back the tower from uh, the denizens that are on the inside, that in fact, whether or not she would make a good ruler of Telosia, if she would unite the tribes. She gave us uh, some in insight. Uh, Camille was... Uh, you know, a little insistent on the questions. So, but uh, anyway, after we gleaned some information, found it a little bit more about our sage that she herself was affected by the calamity, uh, or at least her mother or grandmother was. Uh, and it, uh, the magic was so detrimental, it actually caused, caused damage to the genetic line. So wow. magic, wild magic kind of played in and just all kinds of, mutations just uh just formed uh in people that are ex uh, that were near the center of the explosion so anyway after learning that information we find out that one of the things that we need is an artifact that could help us into the tower now of course the artifact is from our sage's ancestor which is uh buried on an island outside of wolf lake where we're where we're garrisoned right now um anyway she gives us permission to use the art artifact saying that it will behoove one of our magic users so uh we fashion a, a craft to get us to wolf lake because it's in the middle of an island with a dead tree and a kind of sundered uh vegetation and stuff that's on the island uh venturing to the island uh we we find the grave and upon that we kind of run into yeah just uh some pretty bad undead and um mm. yeah camille gets a shiny new piece of jewelry 
And I'll just leave it at that, folks. Just follow up on, on in our archive. It, that, it was that interesting. Sounds like a, that sounds like a pretty uh, like a whole lot of shit happened. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, and we had technical difficulties on top of that. So, oh no! Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that'll probably show up. Difficulties. It was yeah. awesome. So, oh. but yeah, <clears throat> but it was a great episode. I enjoyed Sounds it. Like I had a lot of fun. I'm going to have to, so, have to check, check that out. out. So you all, uh, please, please need to head to our YouTube archive and check out all the all, all the goings on of the Cacophony group. So um, our next one we called, um, I'm trying to read that, Liz, Lysif's Day? L- I Lysif? believe it's Lysif's Day. Lysif's yes. Day. Lysif's that was Day. an interesting one. That was an interesting one, too. Yeah. Girl, just why don't, why don't you tell us about Why don't I tell that? That, was a, that was a one shot, yeah. All within the confines of a tavern. And of uh, course, the most. I'm guessing related. David must have watched that one. I did watch it. Oh. No, all I got to say is, damn, Big Mike. Wow, that went dark. Right? <laughs> it was I mean, dark like my the... role was expected, but Big Mike, really. Oh, crap. You're going to have to remind me what, what the fuck he did. Here? Uh, what I, I didn't see it. I, uh, Deucey? Uh, what he ended up oh, doing yeah, to Deucey yeah, at yeah, the yeah, end? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, Deucey. Yeah. Mm. Deucey he ended up yeah. crapping? No. no, no, not that kind of juice. No. So uh, we ended up in a tavern. Uh, yep. uh-huh. In a one horse. Oh, I town. guess he's gonna friggin' The take other it. horse was a, a, a church uh, with a rather large cemetery, and we were like, "Uh, oh, let's just go into the tavern for some food and drink." And right, and uh, uh, Jub Jub, uh, 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 the barbarian I played, uh, did Jub-Jub. a little bit of foreshadowing, and uh, we. Uh, Ended up in the tavern, hanging out there. Uh, Carol, what happened after that? <laughs> I love Jub Jub. Jub Jub is turning into Jub one. Jub. He's one of my favorite. Okay, characters. actually, Kyle, why don't you tell people a little bit about Jub Jub? Because honestly, it deserves it. it you, people oh, deserve to uh, go. Uh, well, uh, uh, lately, I, Kyle, have gotten into the mythos and putting it into D and D, and so Jub Jub <laughs> is a barbarian uh, with a a warlock invocation uh, that oh. lets him grants false life at will. Um, and the story behind this is Jub Jub was really hungry and not very bright. And he ate a slime and so in cool. doing so he kind of became part slime. And as long as he just, he's constantly eating and shoving anything into his face, the rations in the group, are gone within the first five minutes of an adventure, which makes it havoc for everyone else. Here's the question about Jub Jub. Since he ingested the slime and all that, now if he stops feeding it, will it start feeding on him from the inside? That's that's the that's thing. A that's a possibility. That is a <laughs> Luckily, great slimes question. eat a lot of different things, and so does Jub Jub, <laughs> including <laughs> cinnamon. Jub-Jub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, the neat thing about this this particular uh, one shot was the first half was really we could do what we wanted. So, I mean, we had uh, let's see, the, let's see, the Tabaxi was trying to hit on the Bard, and she wanted nothing to do with them. And then we had. I was Mike was so there were two of us. I was playing Torga, my dwarf, my dwarf mm-hmm. fighter, and we also had uh, yeah, Big Mike who was playing Thorengar. A, yeah, Thorengar who was also a fighter. a fighter. We had two fighters. I didn't even realize it until like almost the end. <coughs> um, he he he's the one that attracted a girlfriend in one of the um, I believe is the daughter of the owners who also was was serving wedge. Uh, but he didn't want the attention, <laughs> which is really good. And and uh, let's see, I remember I, I started a bar fight. I'm just going to give the highlights here. Uh, I want to get to the real discussion. So I started a bar. Uh, we had a bar fight with this really rude person that bumped into uh, Thor. Uh, Thor. I think it was Thoringar. Yes. I know that was an I and uh, it bumped into him, and she was just rude. So I started. I picked a fight with her. Which was fun, except for the fact that she was like, can't, you know, she was trash, so she puked on me. And <coughs> yes, there was the cinnamon. Uh, or basically, I believe, I believe you went into the kitchen, Jub Jub, 
And did one, I believe Naturally. there was... I did the, the cinnamon challenge. I believe the response was they threw a thing of cinnamon at you, which you pretty much just ate. And you, <laughs> Close enough. you held it down. I think you held it down, right? Yes. yes I, I did. really wanted you to freaking horf it up right in, in uh, I can't think of the character, the one I was fighting. I wanted mm-hmm. you to horf it up in her face. Yeah, yeah. So you started a bar fight. Gosh. I know. You were the murder hoboist one there, Carol. Like, oh. I want to fight this person. Just yep. sitting in the bar, doing his thing, getting a drink, trying to get some she grub. Was a but start bitch. a bar fight. I, she was I a, a bitch, question. though, I, man. I, I, hold on a second. I, I, I have one question. <laughs> at what point, at a player, because I, I, I hate to kind of do a quick Good. pause on the question here uh, um, uh, on the program, but I have a point. At what point do you just kind of, as a player, say, you know what? Fuck it. This is what my player would do. They would, like, they would yeah. they're just not going to take this shit from right now. And yeah, we're throwing down. And you know, it blows up the campaign. You know, it kind of blows up the story. You it's, know that you just can't go around acting like a murder hobo all the time. But at the same time, <laughs> you're sitting there at a bar, you're a little bit drunk and, and you know, someone starts some shit. Well, the thing of it is, you is, kind of have to do something. At yeah, point, yeah. Do you, do, do you do you decide? Yeah, fuck it. Well, if it's a on. one, if it's well, a one shot, what I do is easily. I go drink for drink with my character. Okay. And I assume that an ale in D and D fantasy is uh, uh, a full glass of bourbon. <laughs> uh, oh <I> just, God. <laughs> Every so, ale so, that my so character drinks. So equivalent drink. is what exactly, you're saying, right? Yes. The whole point is that they're yeah. equivalent. Whenever you honestly start feeling in in real life a little yeah. bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Wait, wait, Scott. To, to answer your question, I was about we to... also stop rolling dice and start throwing fists at that point too. <laughs> Got it. No, I could never do that. But to answer your question, if it's a one shot. I absolutely, I, it, it, it's an easy decision. Right. It's, it's a one shot. Who fucking and, cares? And There's no the tomorrow. Is that the, during a one shot, your your threshold yep. is actually. Oh, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like, right. The, now, if it's a campaign and you've got consequences that you're going to have to deal with in the next week or later that night, mm-hmm. uh, I think about it a lot more carefully. I still love a good stereotypical barroom fight, but. Um, especially when I play like a, a melee type, you know, melee class, and I'm playing a dwarf. I'm playing a somewhat chaotic dwarf, so it made sense. She was pissed off at this person because she's so rude. And speaking of consequences <coughs> in campaigns, so wait, we know that. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry, yeah. I, Did I you want me to finish what actually happened in the party room? <laughs> I, I had such a. I good tuned out at this point, Carol. You know, um, <laughs> that, uh, that I was just going to go straight into the campaign. But no, not- do you want to know what Life's of Stay is? Yes, please. Okay, so about every ten years, all of the dead around this—I don't know if it's the whole kingdom, but at least in this town, all the dead rise up and attack the townsfolk. Every ten years, that were in unconsecrated ground. I remember that. So this cult apparently came in and unconsecrated the ground. So everybody in that huge graveyard or who didn't get killed in years past rose up. And so the second half of the game was us basically taking on zombie, uh, tons of zombies and cultists. And the, the, the big bad was, was like one of the head cultists that was in the, in the can. In the crapper. He was in the crapper for, for most of it and came out. Taking the Browns to the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, oh. I really wanted, wow. he actually had a skeletal uh, rider on a horse. And I oh, wow. really fucking wanted to take that on because I, I have a bludgeoning. Torga uses like, I, it's a Warhammer stats, but it's a sledgehammer. And uh, I so wanted to go just wreck that See, thing. I thought we were playing a one shot. And when it comes to one shots, it doesn't matter. You throw. Fists. Yeah, but, but no, the problem was there were like 10 zombies. If you recall, there were 10 zombies between <laughs> us and it. So the chances that my fir- first level, right? My first level ass was going to make it to, this, to right. the big guy outside were not Very low. too great. 
I, I'm going to say Jub Jub was on fire for a good portion of that fight. And, yeah, uh, true. He felt confident going out there. Well, why didn't you? Because uh, he's an idiot and he <laughs> thinks with his stomach. And we, the dead also started rising after they mm. were killed as well. It's true. That's true. Wow. We, we tamed down. And so basically, we had to find out we had to mutilate the bodies. The living who were now dead started to rise when they were dead. There you go. The dead started to rise after we killed them. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, Ky- Kyle. Since I know you remember this bit, I so okay. So one last thing. The all right, how things got dark with Big Mike and how did Things get dark with Big Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah I know you'll have a great explanation for this. Uh, how did things go? Well. Um, rations started to get really low Mm -hmm. really (laughs) fast no one's sure why we think it was those other people who were eating where i they wouldn't share their cheese so i had to steal it from them so the table that got wiped out except for like one person that were eating. yeah yeah no i'm fairly certain (laughs) those people ate all the rations in there and uh uh, unfortunately uh the tavern's owner's had two daughters who were working there that evening, and unfortunately, one of them died because they took a deep liking to Big Mike. Mm. And to uh, remember her, and uh, to uh, to celebrate her life, uh, he butchered her and made steaks out of her, and then fed her to people. People is jub jub. But no, yeah. no, no, no. He just took. He basically took out one of her ribs and fed that to Chub Chub. I don't think they turned her into steaks. Oh no, no steaks, steaks no, with a no, nice little no, rib I, bone attached to it. Yeah, I, I don't. Remember it got dark. That. Yeah, that big that's Mike made it dark. Big Mike did that. Wow. Big Mike did that. I know. Uh, Chub yeah. Chub was just fine with tossing dead bodies on a fire, and then pulling them off and eating them. But a big <laughs> Mike really went full. Full yeah, Jack the Ripper there, and it was pretty yeah, disturbing. Barbara someone who loved mind. him so much. Oh God! <laughs> How do you do that to someone who loves you? Oh that much? Lord. Okay. Well, all right, we're done um, with that now. Yep, that's that's that that. Uh, that got dark. Yeah, no. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that got dark. That got dark quick. Uh, that's, that's what I hope to bring in <laughs> on this campaign that I'm going to start here. That, that Unfortunately, I don't think we can talk about it until we talk about the Frank generational game. That's yeah, true. that's true. Well, is there much? Is anybody here who watched it? I started watching it. <laughs> I, I got ran confused it. I ran when it. he started talking about Frank and Frank. This. Yeah, Frank. I couldn't follow which Frank was what. No, uh, it's a really, it's a really good show. You should check it out. Uh, they're they're a Sunday show, usually around right. like four fifteen, four thirty. Um, uh, yeah, three generations of Franks you know so yeah it's a lot of fun when i started listening they were kind of having uh a debate about who was the most insert word here anything you know it's just like uh i am the most uh uh uh, I'm the cast member or whatever most likely not to have uh, some kind of sexually transmittable disease or oh, something God. like that. It got like that, oh. folks. So right. I'm you the just smartest. Have to figure or, that out. Yeah, that's how they are in that family. Oh okay. yeah, that's yeah. That's, uh, that, that, that's how no. It's a it's a great goes. show. It's a great show. Lots of fun. Sounds like Unfortunately, Sounds like I didn't get a get a chance to see it all. Today. Well, the uh, the uh, synopsis that I understand is that um, they certain party members that were separated they they mm-hmm. ended up uh, getting back together. So we look forward to them being able to adventure together uh, in in the next in the next weekly um, uh, game that they're able to play. They'll so be reunited. The, right, they will be so reunited. Good. And uh, and it will feel so good, apparently. <laughs> so, Kyle, why don't you talk to us about campaign creation? And as we are kicking off two campaigns, I don't know how much of a teaser we want to give to our viewers. I know, viewers. which is why I shouldn't host this because I want to spill my guts about you, everything. You want to say everything. No, I want to say everything. Yeah, to I'm say a it. terrible DM. I want to share it all with you people. Yeah, I mean because yeah, I'm wanna... playing in I'm playing in Kyle's game. Well, I don't want to know a damn and, thing. Uh, see you later. 
Well, just talk about yeah. campaigns in general. You know, what's going into you creating one, dude? What's going I mean... into me creating one? Man, uh, uh, so New Year, new campaign, part yeah. one. There's part two next time. Unless, of course, this is really boring and no one wants to watch Frank's version of coming up with a campaign. <laughs> well, we had, we had two basic themes that we were going to talk about that I saw. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to you 100% there. Uh, one was campaign arc and then rules. Okay. And then yeah. we talked about, you know, background and, and hook and such as that for the first, for the first scenario and stuff. But, but how do you develop a campaign arc? How do you determine the, you know, restrictions or the rules, not necessarily rule set, but let's say restrictions on magic, restrictions on class, um, you know, age of, you know, technology, um, um, whether or not there's going to be, you know, divine magic or, um, you know, subclasses, multi-class. I mean, how do you set rules and restrictions? Uh, and then, um, you know, what is the hook you have for your first <laughs> so Under the, the framework of those three things, arc, um, rules and restrictions, and hook, mm -hmm. please. Uh, so uh, what I did is... Um... I gave my uh, players three options, uh, and then when I talked to my players, I was like, oh my gosh, one of these options isn't going to work. Sucks for them. All right, you have two options. Uh, uh, and one of them was written partially uh, by Frank. Uh, well, actually, I was like, Frank, I really like this campaign idea, and I think I can do something with it. Can I have it? Because I know you don't want necessarily want to run it. Uh, uh, the, so that was the Jacques campaign, uh, the J O K E campaign. Uh, uh, and then I was like, well, you know what? I also want to be like, I don't want to rely too heavily on my own, uh, complete homebrew campaign yet. Uh, so I offered up a pre written, uh, third party campaign, um, which heavily involves the, uh, Cthulhu mythos. Um, but set in D and D, so I get to drive people insane and kill them. Uh, as I uh, said, uh, I mentioned that uh, be careful about driving people too insane because then we're going to be going through boringer. way too many characters. That's the best part of D and D is creating characters, isn't that right, David? Oh yeah, I'm yeah. just giving them the opportunity. Let's have do. your have your stack of character sheets ready. It's just like, oh no, at the next one. Here we go. Yeah, you know, if your character dies midway, I have well, various other characters they can play. Yeah, and... fuck that. I make my <laughs> own. But uh... you can you can take uh, cover behind the body of dead bards that <laughs> keep stacking. It <laughs> so you're saying I need to bring in? So you need to say that bring in? I need to bring in a stack of Terrans. Pretty yeah, much. Exactly. <laughs> With two yeah, legs. Exactly. Bring a stack of Terrans. Uh, uh, but then um, <laughs> talking to the players, um, uh, developing a theme for the overall campaign, which really helps with making that long, giant arc. Um, and then, <laughs> like I said, with a pre-written campaign, a lot of that is already done for you. With Frank's campaign, I did uh, use his arc um, but I twisted it using a theme of my own. Um, and so every step along the way ended up changing <clears throat> uh, completely different to what it was. Um, and then throwing in whatever the players wanted to play because um, as a DM, what I find interesting is going to be part of the <coughs> campaign arc and part of the rules that I set for the players. And it's one of those things where if they're not interested in that, then I, as a DM, I'm not going to be interested. Oh, yeah. I have a good idea. So uh, Scott is going to go grab a drink yeah. as he does every time. Because oh. <laughs> Kyle's idea is driving well, drinking. Well, <laughs> That's I'm right. listening. And... Yeah, no. And I'll keep going here. Um, like I yeah. said, the DM, my part in that to make sure that I'm interested in this campaign is to make sure that the theme I want, the overall arc, is something that uh, uh, I want to tell and that these players are going to create for me um, and that the rules are rules that I find interesting, that I want to try out, that I want to do. Um, um, 
for example, uh, the clerics um, or anyone who can cast Revivify can't in this world um, until they uh, have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, audition, essentially, with the king or queen of the undead, god, goddess, whatever. Oh, um, hey, how would you do that in a minute? How would I do that in a minute? Yeah. Are you going to stop time for... Because that, that is actually, as a player, that's an interesting question. Because Revivify, you can only... You know, you have a minute to get that off. Oh, no. Uh, when you hit fifth level... Yeah. Um, you have to audition oh, You have the to ability. do it. You oh, have I... to... And you will uh, travel to this realm and you will be judged whether you are worthy or not to bring a soul back from the dead to the living. Oh, that's cool. If you try to revivify not without yet. having done this, you don't get the soul back. You get a zombie, which is a waste of a 300 gold piece. So I don't suggest <laughs> doing so, that so, until you talk to the Raven Queen. So basically you audition once and then you can cast it after. Yes. Okay. Um, that's that's a really interesting i like that concept that's really cool well you know it was one of those uh ideas that kind of hit my head and it's like well what gives you the right to bring back something from the dead i mean frankenstein let's go yeah. with that and yeah. it's like what what gave frankenstein the right to do that and he did it he didn't have the right to do that he had no one's blessing to do that and he ends up uh, uh, creating a monster. Now, the book is obviously, and everything on that was entirely different. Ah, okay. That's Ernie trying to get uh, stuff out to me. I'm threatening my players with not getting <laughs> good stuff. That's the other thing as a DM you should learn how to do. Uh, um, but that's kind of the uh, campaign arc, finding that I've got little bits and pieces here which, like I said, I'm stealing from Frank, which is, you know, just what does each level of play look like? Um, what's the overall goal for that? And when they meet it, when do they level up to the next thing? And then... Um, gosh. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just trying to think. It's a very broad question. And the broader question, the harder it is for me to answer because I have a lot of things I want to say, but then I forget what the question is at the beginning of it. Well, will, it can't, will your campaign allow for characters to have an arc within the story as well? Like, you know, All right, personal growth. Something. I hope so, actually. With yeah. as f you're, you're muted. You're muted, Scott. <laughs> 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 he's still muted. No, he's, he's just doing messing with purpose. us. <laughs> For those listening to the audio podcast, that tiny URL dot, I don't know. <laughs> Scott no, um, was doing a very funny visible gab. Yes, which you yes, find I was on Twitch yes, or on our yes, YouTube I, archives. I can, I can probably do that. Now, it, it's it's funny that you say about arc and personal arc. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I wanted to stop real quick because ask a yeah. question. What do you define, um, Kyle? Yeah. And I wanted to have maybe David and, and Carol talk about the differences. Oh, thank goodness. Um, <clears throat> yeah. We can talk. I mean, what, what, yeah, no, what, I want you guys no, to talk. I, 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 I want to, because I, I want to compare and contrast a sure. campaign arc mm -hmm. versus a character arc. Okay. So, what are the components that you see, Kyle, of a campaign arc? And then, David and Carol, because David, you make a ton of characters. Carol, you make very involved characters with, 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 uh, with uh, stories and such as that. Um, what 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 are the differences? What what are the components that you have that go into a campaign arc, Kyle? Uh, so components that go into a campaign arc. I mean, I, I'll, I'll 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 give you an example. <laughs> actually, Scott, I, I, I actually have a friend of mine that wanted me to write a campaign, and I started off with like the creation of the universe. And I've been you stuck went, on that. Yeah. Wow. I went, I went where you, you know, went to the beginning. I went That's to the trap. beginning, right? <laughs> That's it, a trap. It is. Oh, man. I've been doing it for <laughs> a year now, right? And, and I can't get past it. You know, so in essence, it's, it's, it's a, it, it is a trap. It goes nowhere. So if you're doing a quick and dirty, uh, quick and dirty, but just a good, quick, functional campaign, Kyle, what, 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 what do you see that the components that are needed in order to have a viable, 
uh, campaign arc. Mm, okay, uh, let's go with campaign one, which, like I said, I kicked to the curb. Uh, as a new DM uh, and as a player for a couple of four years now. Oh gosh, my child wasn't born when I started playing D and D. So as a, a, a player, as a DM, um, finding out what interests me as a DM has to be uh, one of the things. And I've been over this while you went to get your beer, uh, uh, because if I'm oh, not interested gosh. in it, then I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna enjoy myself. And if I'm not enjoying myself, then no one has fun ever. Right. Um, right. But one of the things that was interesting to me was, you know, I had never gone on a dragon hunt in D and D, uh, and I'm wondering if any of my players have actually gone on a specific. This is the campaign. You are here to kill a dragon. I mean, and I, I don't think I've ever dug on on a dragon hunt. I mean, yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah, that's cool. That's and cool. so that was going to be the campaign arc, and it was going to be like a ten. Well, okay, I'm. Running. Is that so the a one? 20... We... Wait, was that the the Jacques campaign? No, no, that's, that's okay. The Jacques campaign is a joke because I took it from Frank and I completely changed it. And <laughs> I like that can I like the idea because that one was so it open was a good and one. sandbox. And so I'm trying to keep that uh, shut and not talk about it too much because I do like that one. And as I'm trying to work on. Uh, 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 the mythos campaign here. I'm like, man, I should have gone jock. It would have been so much easier. I told you that. <laughs> so, so to uh, to uh, summarize, you would say what's important to a campaign arc is that it needs to be something that interests you and something that you want to investigate. Something that so, interests me, something I want to investigate, and to keep it simple. I mean, if you want to make the whole world and start from the very beginning of a universe. Which, again, it's a trap because it's going to take you a long time. But if you're interested right. in it and you're going to work on it nonstop and never sleep, then yeah, no, that's yeah, where you right, should absolutely right. start. Yeah. For a campaign, though, just the campaign right. and figuring out the very simple steps you want to do. That's I want advice. my players to experience something I haven't, and I also want to experience it, say, on this side of things. We are going to specifically hunt down a dragon. What do you need to do as first level PCs to hunt down a dragon? Mm. It's like, oh, okay, well, we need ballistas because we're level one and we're not going to do this. We need to find an army. And it's like, okay, as you tell me your steps of what you need to do, there's those little hops in the story. You know what you need? You need what? a montage. <laughs> Just the best. Around. Around. And the that's how you montage. make a there one you go. shot. <laughs> Hey, uh, I was oh. actually I was thinking you just go up. You have to go out and kill like a million kobolds, right? Right. To be right. <laughs> to level up enough to take out a dragon. So Carol and David, um, um, David will go first um, about character oh. arcs and personal development and such as that. Because I, I want to explain this idea about arcs. How 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 do you? Because you do <coughs> develop quite a few characters and you like to write characters. Mine are so shallow, them, they don't have are, 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 are they really shallow? Are you looking for one specific thing that you're testing? Do you ever go into backstory? Do you develop something, or is it something that you want it to be an empty shell, in essence, that gets into a campaign, and then you develop it, and your arc, in essence, you kind of respond to what the campaign is doing? Right. Uh, well, for a character arc, I mean, I start with the inception of an idea, <laughs> you know, just the, you know, it might be a particular class or something, a uh, race or something. And then I just kind of build the character's backstory and personal growth from that. I did that mm -hmm. in our, uh, the home campaign my DM is running and um, she's, taken it and ran with it and actually incorporated my character's backstory into the campaign. <coughs> so, um, but uh, the way that I like think about campaign arcs and stuff like that is just like, it's that old analogy. It's, um, you know, every adventure starts with one step. So right. with using that analogy, just, focus on creating like the first adventure you know i mean first encounter first 
and kind of take it from there. And, you know, you'll start to see things and you'll be able to pull it in to a cohesive story eventually, you know, because uh, I know a lot of DMs. I mean, it, it's no secret. Some of them have a really thought out uh, campaign written out, you know, step for step and, and stuff like that. Some it's just, it's just a rough, you know, kind of almost like spreadsheet thing, uh, like process. And, you know, depending on the, the choices that your character makes, that's going to determine that that's how that's going to determine the arc of the story. You know, right. it's, it's like choose your own adventure kind of thing. And that's the state of mind that you have as a DM. It's just like, okay, you got a couple of options. Mm -hmm. It's up to your players where you're going to go and then start it from there. And then uh, I would think as a DM, you know, you have your character's backstories. You can start to think, okay, if they make such and such decision, how we can incorporate something from their backstory into that adventure. Into that adventure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It might be somebody that they encounter characters past Carol or something like that. You know, ironically Frank, that that's true. Frank, Frank is a good crafter when yeah. it comes he to is. story arcs. And and the, he said, the funniest thing was, is that Taryn's sister was not even in her backstory because she wasn't originally a character. But I created her also as a um, as my uh, well, it anti takes, my it paladin. Could be something insignificant, and a DM can just blow it off. Oh, it was right. great. That's the best part. Was I'm I'm glad I actually went that way because I like surprises like that. You know, nasty surprises for my character usually mean they're fun surprises for me, and they keep me on my toes as a player. So so so, so here's a question for you then, Carol. Yeah. Whenever you're. Whenever you're um, designing your characters and let's say you're going to start them off at first or third you know a very young character and such as that yeah do you have a because you you you, you do tend to you know flesh out the backstories and uh <coughs> play play you know very um i want to say you know complex and rich characters there do you have an idea about where you want to take your character not just about you know feats and and how you're going to do the build so to say mm -hmm. But actually, as far as character development, is there a, um, you know, something in their backstory they want to find their sister? They want to avenge their, 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 uh, the, the death of their village. You know, is, is there something that, you know, that, that you bring that sometimes doesn't fit with the campaign and then you're going to... I can answer this, that. Right? Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at never... how do you, how do you marry, you know, a fleshed out campaign with its own arc and complex story driven backgrounds and characters who have their own arc when they clash? How do you, how do you, how do you think about that? Well, if you're Frank, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there was a huge, I mean, there was a rather big part. Sorry, Frank. There was a rather big part of Taryn's backstory that left that was totally left uh, unanswered. Right. I'm to hoping be fair, that maybe if it's anything like the backstory you sent me, I can forgive Frank for not. No, going it's 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 fair. No, it's fair. <laughs> I mean, the point was brought up too. I came in halfway through, and yes. it's it's fair. Um, I mean, he. Although to be honest, as I said, you could have made a really easy bite because somebody somebody set her up. And he basically said it wasn't IO. He could have made it IO quite easily because mm -hmm. he needed to get her to go out and find that staff because he knew either he or her sister was going to get it. And it was the one thing either you kill her to ensure her sister's the one that's going to show up for it, or you set her up so that she has to leave town. So why not? And of course, with him being infected, evil, racist. And with an agenda of trying to, because remember what happened when Manise went there, mm. he basically was setting, you know, he basically was setting up uh, non-humans as, as bad guys. And that actually, what happened to Taryn would have fit really well with that narrative. See, Frank, it totally could have, we could have just answered it right there, but you had to say <laughs> it wasn't him and I didn't flesh it out. So be it. I had a I had a great old time, and maybe maybe I don't know. He's 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 got plans. He's got plans for got future plans, huh? For yeah, future so one shot or shots. Oh or yeah, something. that's right. 
for that we for that campaign. Gotta get you to the library. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that. I'm hoping. Actually, I know. Well, part of it is I really want to see what Fra what Kyle rather because you wrote an entire dungeon in the library, and I really want to see this. So it's a great plot cool. device to to where she's going to either get a prosthetic raise or it's tear. so high that when she kindly gets there, it's <laughs> well, just. I'm hoping I'm hoping Manise and 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 uh, you know Lucas will be there as well as Dewey in some sort of an NPC. That's the only bad thing is that Dewey have to be an NPC. Yeah, that's fine. So, let's uh, because we are you know we, we can sit and talk about stuff all night. But oh God, yes. Uh, well, that, that's can I uh, go for a little bit more go, campaign go, prepping go, go, I'm doing? Go, go. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, I'm running a pre-written campaign, um, and we were talking about character arcs for a second there. One of the things I'm doing, and this is my first time, so I'm maybe I'm maybe over-promising and going to under-deliver heavily, which is my fear in this whole thing. Uh, You'll so be I'm fine. Going to run myself Welcome ragged. to 2021. <laughs> I think oh you're gosh, I, right, Kyle. You'll be fine. I have I have absolute faith in you. And Let your... me finish, Carol. Uh, I appreciate the nice words. You can use that as your final thoughts later. One of the things I'm doing is I'm asking my players to write their backstories, um, and then I'm going to read through them. And then what I'm trying to do is, okay, we're going to talk at this time. You and I we're going to go over your background. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about it, and I'm going to ask you questions about your character. Um. One of them, <laughs> uh, when I get the opportunity to ask, is what do you want from this character? You know, where do they begin, and where do you think they'll end? And uh, as a DM, having an idea of where they want to start, where they want to end, allows me to then take the middle there and either move it up, move it down, and just play with it and see how the character changes uh over the course of the campaign and allow me to put a character arc um but allow them to kind of follow the arc uh if they want to um uh but, but that's one of the other things i'm doing talking uh to my players about each of the backgrounds they have fleshing out details which is going to let me uh put it into this pre-written campaign which is much harder to do for character backgrounds um the other thing uh gosh i don't actually have oh no i do have it up anyway that's for that and then i'm threatening them if they don't do these things soon i'm not going to have their character portraits done so do it uh as far as <coughs> anything else um, that's the specific background I'm doing for these guys. I've already kind of talking about the rules that I'm kind of putting out there. I'm more or less letting them do what they like um, within reason because I am a new campaign. I'm trying to keep it somewhat level, but I find some stuff in D&D &D nowadays has some power creep to it. So I'm trying to bring some things up, other things right. where they're at. Um, for example, we've got a Divine Soul Sorcerer and having played three of them in the past <laughs> since it came out, uh, I realize it has a lot of shortcomings. And it's like, okay, I'm going to give you these spells on top of your normal sorcery list. And this is going to cover this certain base here. And so you may feel free to choose other things. Um, yep. The uh, only other thing I have to worry right now is the hook, the first scenario. Uh, with the Jacques campaign, I had it perfect exactly how i wanted to do that with this one um i don't know how i'm going to do it i'm certainly not following the book on the first scenario though so i'm going to come up with something myself inspiration has hit a little bit but not enough to get the game going you know i it said this was something that i brought i think i brought up with you is the fact that the jacques campaign really it was just it sort of was a basis of um, uh, character backstories more than anything else. And it was sandboxy, so you could have done anything you right. wanted. I didn't bring that up because I was like, think that's why I was voting for it because I figured it might be easier. But you also brought up the point as somebody who is relatively new to GMing, although you're a good GM, I, I don't really see that you're that 
new. You don't act like uh, so. For those of you listening to the audio podcast, you do not see the sarcasm. Uh, Carol is there is the no <laughs> sarcasm. Doing air quotes. This is a really <laughs> mean moment for her. Wait, 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 yeah, bullshit. Where we we get the mature audience tag. Really, really funny. Uh, you know, yeah. no. See, I just, really yeah, I just funny. did a certain gesture out of, you know, that required the yeah. middle finger. Um, really good. Because that's, no. no, there was no sarcasm at there all. There wasn't any sarcasm. I have one last quick question here, and this may be one we have to leave on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, <gasps> I'll, I'll <see> you, Kyle. <laughs> In the age of Twitch and um, <laughs> all of these things, do you really need a campaign hook? I mean, you already have your cast is already there. You're already, you're, you know you're going to be playing here. Do you really need a hook? Who is the uh, hook Great for? question. A hook used to be for the players to get them interested and get them vested into the campaign. Oh. But these are, these are already here. Who's the hook for? Is it for the audience or is it for the character? Oh, that is a great question. Wow. And I hope I show up. Tune in next week. When... <laughs> no, oh to be God. fair, I am actually reading deeply into DMing with an audience and seeing if I can learn some right. stuff there. And one of them is, you know, I'm thinking about leaving a cliffhanger on almost every episode. Almost every episode, yeah. Now, Which, know... to be fair, w works perfect for me because I never actually finish a session on time. <laughs> So be like, all right, roll for an unintentional No, you're not Perfect. wrong. Most if you if most of them do end up on I mean you look at critical role or whatever too, a lot of them end up on cliffs. Okay. And it's some of the others scripted. I've been listening to usually I'm gonna end on a huge cliffy right here. Oh, that's a now, really now Frank I, I you know he didn't put post it, but I was gonna say Frank was would totally call out that I hate cliffhangers. It's not yep. true. I only hate cliffhangers if I'm not a permanent member of the campaign. I only mm. really hated them when, when back when I first was in the campaign, but only as a guest, and I wasn't sure when I was coming back to play. So you know, I mean, I and in reality, in some ways, I love cliffhangers because it gives me something to think about for till the next session. And, right. to, and to right. envision and such. And it's a ton of fun to do that and to think about what do I think is going to happen? Well, so it's, I actually it's gonna like be interesting. Fingers. It's going to be interesting. I think we may have a, have a something to talk about. How do you DM campaigns in the age of Twitch uh, and um, set casts and such? I don't know if we can do it next week, but, uh, but it sounds like something we can actually do. Do you change how you set up a, a campaign? Do you <laughs> change how you create your characters? Rich, rich, uh, rich um, mind to, um, to, to, to mind. You know what I'm saying. There's a lot of crap that can come out of that. But anyway, uh, it is our time. It is eight o'clock. Uh, it is time for us to. It is time for us to return to the dulcet tones. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Put one hand on your radio dial and the other on your. Join us special. Next week <laughs> as we talk more about Dungeons and Dragons and campaigns and characters and all these other things that we may be able to talk about. And I'm your host. Uh, Gary White. Yeah. There we go. Nice. <laughs> oh, we go. my God. Oh, my God. Here I was thinking, no, Mel, actually create a character like Venus Flytrap from there you WKRP. Go. There you go. <laughs> Guys, um, uh, final thoughts. We'll just wrap it up here real quick. Uh, David, Carol, and Kyle, what, what what are our final thoughts? Or do we do final thoughts? Do we just want to wave and say? No, no, no. We can do final thoughts. I'll do a quick final thought. Right. Uh, David. Character arc arcs and campaign arcs. I mean, yeah, they're they can be met to to fit within each other. I mean, I'm experiencing it right now. Uh, you know, little back, little known backstory I wrote. Next thing you know, it's boom, campaign plot. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so anyway, as a DM and all that. Yeah, I mean, just take your inspiration from your own characters' backstories. <laughs> there you go, Carol. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. But um, I also do believe you can, and I know GMs who have done it very successfully, incorporated backstories into like even pre-written plots. Um, mm -hmm. 
I've had it happen. I've had not so much me GMing, but I've had it happen to be as a player where I had character arcs that I did not expect to have because they were totally pre-written campaigns. And we, you know, pretty much you stick to that campaign. Uh, your players actually can have a big hand in that too, just by just the role playing and such that they do. Mm. Um, you know, if you give them time to go, you know, to talk amongst each other and, and to even, you know, maybe have a little bit of internal dialogue that that's said and such of what their thoughts are. You can, you can do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, it can be incorporated. And I said, and I actually have a huge amount of faith that Kyle can do it. I think Kyle's got a good mind for story. I do too. Which is why I'm excited to be in his campaign. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> what is he doing? Kyle, don't, don't would you that? give us your final thoughts, please? My final thoughts. Uh, uh, two weeks and two days from now, I will be beginning my first uh, uh, campaign as a DM for you murder hobos. Uh, mostly because Frank really threw me under the bus on this one. He did. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> You, I thought you volunteered. No, he volunteered me, and I'm uh, too nice to say no. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I really thought you volunteered. I was like, wow, no, no, he heard my uh, uh, gaming resolution. I really want to DM a campaign. All right, going to throw Kyle on the bus, make him run a campaign. There you go. Think or swim, bud. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be fine, fine, Kyle. Uh, uh, so, uh, great, Kyle. It will be awful. I will disappoint oh, many of you like I have my <laughs> wife so many times. That's why I keep her down the well so she can't get away from my disappointment. Oh, Lord. Uh, little shop, little shop do you, uh, Wait, well, you keep her down a well? Do you hand down the lotion to, you know, to, oh, to put her on the skin? I just remembered who Jub Jub's spirit token it's, Guardian it's, is? It's, it's Seymour. Yeah. No, no, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, it's the uh, Audrey. <coughs> Audrey, yeah. it's Audrey. Audrey yeah. Feed Audrey. me, Seymour. Feed me. me. Audrey you should have had that as your backdrop for I last did, weekend. and then people were like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "Fine, I'll go with the blob." <laughs> <sighs> nice, outstanding. Well, guys, uh, it's always fun to, to to get a chance to chat with you all, and um, hope to and hope to see you. You're gonna be in the campaign, I Scott. I mean, so's David, but you know, you he's know, the no, you no, know, I, 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 we're I gonna get to play own. together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna that's, be a lot. That's, that's but that's, that's the really one really regret cool. I have that's being be really on cool. Thursday, man, is I don't get to play with you two. <laughs> really, under episode under. Two. Under. I really would like to do a campaign with you, Scott, someday, especially. Well, uh, and, and well, David. If, I screw, if I screw up my cal- right. character development, you might. <laughs> so. you well, I can't. I can't. I. I, I don't want to do both campaigns. That would be too much. Uh, it, 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 it is a lot to do both. It is a lot to do both. No doubt about that. Well, guys, we'll uh, we'll uh, wrap it up with there. Um, we'll give our little, you know, princess die waves. Thank. Follow us on, follow Twitch, us on Twitch, follow, follow us, on, us on, Twitter. on Twitter, take a look at our archive, um, buy all that archives. cool shit on DID. We have really cool stuff. I mean, some of the shirts that, you know, they're, they're really fun. They, they, I have one about you know, <laughs> the, the, the little, the, the little shirt on the little city on fire that says, yeah, we did that. And people can't figure out if I'm pro Trump or Antifa. It's just fucking cool. There you go. <laughs> That's hey. a good place to be, probably. <laughs> I mean, that's no one really, knows what really you nice are. No one like. It, d- does he want to? Um. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> was, oh no, we're not going to repeat that. So, no, no, not just at Just in case. So, um, just in case. <laughs> thank you all very much for joining us, and we will see you again soon. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pirate Dog Days. Thank you. Pirate Dog Dice. Pirate I fish, fish games. Game. Fish.